Hi, this is Professor Faber. So this lecture is on complex sentences, uh, ICDC and then DCIC, which is independent clause plus dependent clause, and then uh, dependent clause plus I, independent clause. This is also just a quick review of compound sentences, comma splices, run-ons, review of previous methods, and five simple sentence patterns. And so this is going to help you to understand the difference between a simple sentence, a compound sentence, and then a complex sentence. So it looks a little busy in the title, uh, but I think it's just important for us to review so that you have an understanding of what a complex sentence is. So this is the lecture on complex sentences as reflected in the ICDC and DCIC uh, sentence dynamics. This lecture reviews compound sentences using um, comma splices and run-ons, previous methods for compound sentences, including method number one, which is your fanboys, method number two, semicolon by itself, and then method number three, semicolon plus conjunctive adverb plus comma. This lecture also reviews five simple sentence patterns as important to the discussion. So you can find all of this information uh, in the fundamentals of college writing. So let's review five simple sentence patterns, which you can find on pages 29 to 36 in the course text. And then, of course, you can also find a review on pages 41 to 45. Um, so what is a simple sentence? It's just as, as simple as can be. The simple sentence is defined as a sentence that houses a subject and a verb, and it is considered an independent clause. So Tom threw the ball, John ran. And remember, this can be, um, say, a complete sentence, but not necessarily a complete thought because we don't know why Tom threw the ball and we don't know why John ran. So we have a subject, which is the who or what performs the action. The subject can also be the who or a what about which a statement is made. The cat chased the uh, mouse. Who chased the mouse? The cat. Then we have verb, a verb, um, a word that shows action or links the subject. So we understand that fumbled is a verb and is in the past tense. Is is a linking verb and it's part of the uh, B family. So is, am, are, was, and were. And then we have phrases on the floor, the red car, muddy feet, flowing water. Understand that a phrase is more than a word, but less than a sentence. And then clause a group of words with a subject and a verb. So you can have a independent clause and a dependent clause. And always remember that the simple sentence is, is falls under the category of independent clause. So then when you have a fragment, it can also work like a dependent clause because after the class ends, if you read that aloud, the first thing you're going to want to know, okay, so what happened after the class ends? So it's functioning not only as a fragment, but it's also functioning as a dependent clause. And the reason why is the word after is a dependent word. And when it comes before an independent clause, like the class ends, uh, it makes it a dependent clause. Okay, so dependent word plus independent clause makes it a dependent clause. And then, of course, it can be a fragment because it's not complete. All right. So remember that the dependent clause and independent clause, the dependent clause is the baby. The independent clause is the mother. Um, mother the mother does not need the baby in order to function as an adult but the baby needs the mother in order to function as a baby so remember the sentence pattern subject verb compound subject verb subject compound verb compound subject compound verb and then verb subject and verb compound subject so then we went over uh, compound sentences method number one so we are moving from simple sentences to now compound sentences, and we have a method here. You can find this on pages 47 and 53. And remember, it's comma plus fanboys. So when we're thinking about simple versus uh, compound and just doing a quick review of that, we, uh, we can uh, add the comma plus fanboys. We can add semicolon by itself, and then we can add conjunctive, uh, semicolon, conjunctive adverb, and comma, right, just in terms of understanding the differences. And then we looked at the patterns So uh, for method number one, method number two, method number three. Note, these are considered 
uh, conjunctive adverbs. So make sure you know the difference when you are thinking about how to use a dependent word. And then for exercise method number one, comma plus fanboys, we looked at a sample sentence and we can revise that sentence using a comma fanboy, using semicolon by itself, and then using semicolon conjunctive adverb and comma. Okay. Then we looked at method number two, which is your semicolon by itself. So wherever you place that semicolon, uh, or even if you were adding a period to this first independent clause, then wherever you place it is the same place you place, say, the uh, uh, comma and fanboy or the conjunctive adverb, I mean, semicolon con conjunctive adverb and comma, right? You don't get creative. So then we looked at some sample sentences, right? And so using a semicolon by itself, and then we did uh, a few key points about simple, uh, simple sentences like run-ons and comma splices. And so here's the Jane likes to eat, period. She likes to eat pickles. Remember, when you end one sentence, you have to begin another, which creates a capital letter for the first word. Jane likes to eat, comma, uh, with a fanboy, but you do not capitalize the she here. It is not a proper noun. It is a uh, pronoun. She refers to Jane. So that's your method one. And then in the same location, semicolon by itself, again, you do not capitalize the S in she, method number two. And then, of course, uh, method number three, semicolon in addition comma you do not capitalize the s here because it is a uh pronoun if she in all of these sentences were was john um then yes you would capitalize j in john okay then we looked at compound sentences method number three which is semicolon plus conjunctive adverb plus comma i want to understand uh, here's a recap of the methods so you know the difference, right? So comma plus fanboy, semicolon by itself, and then semicolon plus conjunctive adverb plus comma. So note the differences. And then, of course, we looked at exercises, right? So don't forget when you are inserting the semicolon, you don't need that extra spacing in be uh, between here. You don't need that extra spacing in between here. And remember, you are not capitalizing this S in she, okay? And then uh, when we're looking at compound sentences uh, in terms of revising uh, for sentences uh, that may house comma splices and run-ons, we understand that a compound sentence is defined as joining two or more simple sentences, which are also defined as independent clauses. So when a compound sentence is not punctuated grammatically, there are two standard sentence errors, comma splice, run on. So a comma splice happens when two independent clauses or simple sentences, simple sentences are separated by a comma. So Lola wanted to buy a car, a new car, that is a simple sentence. We can end it with the period right now. Um, but um, she started, I think I should not have this so here. Okay. She started to save 10% of her weekly paycheck. We could begin a capital, uh, we can end a period here and uh, create a capital letter for S, but because they are combined by a comma, this is considered a comma splice. A run on would then, if you just remove the comma and, and, all of, and, and the whole sentence just ran together, that will be considered a run on. Okay. And then the four standard methods to correct uh, a comma splice or run on is the same methods that you will use in method number one, method number two, method number three, you, uh, which also uh, added to that, you can just end one sentence and begin the next, okay? So you can end one sentence with a period, as you see here, you can insert a comma plus fanboys, you can insert a semicolon by itself, insert a semicolon by plus conjunctive adverb plus comma. These are your ways to correct um, really any sentence, whether it is a comma splice or run on or just um, if there's um, just an um, inappropriate, you know, not grammatical way of reading uh, that sentence. So revising a sample sentence and we looked at uh, sample comma splice. So we have two sentences uh, separated by a comma. So we can end with a period. 
We could uh, add a uh, comma plus fanboy. We can add a semicolon by itself, or we can add a semicolon uh, plus conjunctive adverb plus comma. Okay. Same thing with the run on. Now, this was a little tricky with the last lecture, so I had added something else, I think. So the bus stop settling period, capital letter S, right? But the bus stop suddenly, um, comma, and she spilled her coffee, right? So you would need to add a comma. Um, but what I noticed in some previous quizzes that uh, some students are, are capitalizing that S and that she. So make sure to know the difference uh, there. And then now the topic for this lecture is actually complex sentences, joining simple sentences and dependent clauses. So we need to go a little slower here. You can find this on pages 75 to 86 in the course text. So a complex sentence is defined as joining one simple sentence or independent clause to one or more dependent clauses. So your patterns, ICDC, which would be independent clause plus dependent clause. DC comma IC, which would be dependent clause plus independent clause. Dependent clause comma plus independent clause. Okay. So let's look at the pattern. The first pattern, IC, DC. Okay. You do not need a comma between the independent clause and the dependent clause with this pattern. Here is an example. So Lynn likes to eat pickles, even though she does not like them on her hamburgers. You don't need a comma in between uh, before or after even though, because it is integrated into the sentence itself. But if we take that same sentence and we move even though, uh, and we say even though Lynn likes to eat pickles, she does not like them on her hamburgers, uh, dependent clause plus comma plus independent clause, it is your way of introducing um, uh, a sentence or, or a phrase. I forget the name of it. Um, I have to research it again. But it's even though Lynn likes to eat pickles, comma, she does not like them on her hamburgers. You do not place even though, you do not place a comma after even though, right? I see that a lot of times with just uh, um, different students, they try to uh, create or make even though function like however. Whereas if you introduced a, a um, sentence with however, it will it would be followed by a comma. But even though Lynn likes to eat pickles, this whole dependent clause here, everything before the comma is a dependent clause. This is a dependent word put before an independent clause, Lynn likes to eat pickles, which makes it a dependent clause. And this is your independent clause. So remember, this independent clause is the mother. It doesn't need the baby to be an adult. Uh, but this dependent clause is the baby. It needs the mother to function as a baby. So how to create a dependent clause? You understand how to create an independent clause. It is a simple sentence. Now you must know how to create a dependent clause so you can recognize the pattern. So dependent word plus independent clause. So if we read this, uh, this phrase here, even though Lynn likes to eat pickles, this will function as a dependent clause and also as a phrase because it's not a, it's not a simple sentence. Okay. So dependent word, even though, uh, baby, independent clause, Lynn likes to eat pickles. And I forgot to add a period there. And that is the mother. Okay. So here's the, uh, you can find, um, different dependent words on pages 75 to 77 in the text. And this list is not exhaustive, but it gives you some idea that if you place, even though within the middle of a sentence, you don't need commas. But if you place, even though plus the independent clause, you need a comma. The same works with unless, when, whether, even if, now that sense in order that Although you don't place a comma after although, you place a comma after the full dependent clause. So let's review the differences. So simple sentence, Lynn likes to eat pickles, right? Compound sentence, method one, method two, method three. So comma, fanboy, semicolon by itself, semicolon, conjunctive adverb, comma. Okay, so these, this is a... Here's the difference between a simple and a compound. Now here is the difference between a compound and a complex. So 
ICDC, DCIC. So we understand that uh, Lynn likes to eat pickles, even though she does not like them on her hamburgers, is an independent clause. So everything before here is an independent clause. And everything that begins with the dependent word would be a dependent clause. Okay. So again, I see DC, Lynn likes to eat pickles, although she does not like them on her hamburger. So it sort of has the same meaning, even though and although. So now when we want to place although and even though at the beginning of the sentence, that's going to be a DC plus comma. Let me just go ahead and do this just for the sake of doing it. Plus comma. Uh, BC plus comma plus IC, right? BC plus comma uh, plus IC, okay? So although Lynn likes to eat pickles, everything before the comma, including the comma, is your dependent clause. She does not like them on her hamburgers is, is the independent clause. Even though Lynn likes to eat pickles, everything before the comma and including the comma, she does not like them on her hamburger. So that's your DC comma plus IC. So identify the IC plus DC or the DC IC in terms of exercises. So since James and Nancy moved to New York City, we do not see them as often as before. So we understand that since is a dependent word. Let's just do this. Okay, since is a, is a dependent word, and it is coming before James and Nancy moved to New York City. Let's see if we can just underline that. Okay, oh, I don't know why that does that. Underline that. Okay, and then everything before the comma and including the comma would be the dependent clause. So then if we said we do not see them as often uh, as before, that's your independent clause. Uh, if you wanted to, we, let me see, we do not see them as often as before since James. So if you wanted to change the order, we do not see them as often as before since James and Nancy moved to New York City. And that's just changing the order of it, right? So then um, since is integrated into the sentence, so we would not need a comma. So this is your uh, DC plus comma plus IC for this sentence here, okay? DC plus IC, DC plus IC. Uh, when we decide to move the dependent word to the middle of the sentence, then this becomes uh, IC plus DC. Okay, therefore, we don't need a comma, right? So until Samson met Delilah, he had beautiful hair. Again, until is a dependent word. So you can do that. Until. Uh, I think I'm missing my thing, keyboard. Until is a dependent word. Until Samson met Delilah. That is a uh, full dependent clause. He had beautiful hair. And so then you can reverse it. He had beautiful hair. Um, let's say Samson had beautiful hair until he met Delilah. Right, the sentence still sort of needs to make some sense, right? So until is in the middle of the sentence, and so therefore it becomes a dependent word that does not need comma before or after it. Okay, Frankenstein. Let me just go down here. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Frankenstein had uh, had been my favorite novel until I read Dracula. So until is in the middle. And this creates IC plus BC. But if I wanted to create a BC uh, IC, then I can say until until I read Dracula, comma Frankenstein Frankenstein had been my favorite. 
novel. Okay, and I don't necessarily need to have that in bold. I do need to italicize Dracula because that is a film. Dracula and Frankenstein. That's a film and it's a larger work. Okay, so until is the dependent word. Okay, make that bold. And everything bef uh, before the comma, comma, including the comma, would be your dependent clause. So everything after that is your independent clause. Okay. Uh, I, I decided to work out even though I was tired. So even though would be your dependent clause is mixed in with the sentence. Okay. And then and then even though I ate a snack before the movie, I was still hungry. So independent, I mean dependent word in front of a independent clause makes it a dependent clause. And then I was still hungry is your independent clause. Okay. So this is the ICDC, DCIC for complex sentences. Understand the difference between a simple sentence, a compound sentence with the three methods, uh, uh, comma fanboys, semicolon by itself, and then um, semicolon conjunctive adverb and comma. That's for compound sentences. But when you are creating a complex sentence, uh, it depends on where you place the dependent word. And so the dependent word, when it comes before an independent clause, that creates a dependent clause. When you integrate it in the middle of the sentence, then it is um, still, you still have a dependent clause, but you don't need a comma in between. And just be sure to notice the difference between really review this table here, because I feel like this will give you some um, some insight into um, understanding the difference. OK, this is complex sentences. I see DC. Thank you very much for listening.